A deck of cards is shuffled thoroughly. The participant is instructed to cut off any amount of cards that they want. They take the cards and you take your cards and shuffle them behind your back. This could also be done underneath a table. You could also get into some shenanigans under the table if you know what I mean. You guys switch piles, so now they're shuffling yours and you're shuffling theirs. You now inform the participant that you will select a card for them just as they will select a card for you. And you do just that. You give them a card, they give you a card. You now instruct them to take that card and put it the opposite way round in their pile. So right now you have a card that is the opposite way round and they have a card that is the opposite way round. Remember, they shuffle the piles. The deck is mixed. They shuffle, you shuffle, you shuffle, they shuffle. And yet, both cards are a match. If you're a magician and you do this pose at any point in your show, you should be shot. This one too. This one as well. As a matter of fact, this video is not going to be a tutorial. This video is going to be a rant on magicians and their pictures. What's this right here? If I had a dollar for every magician that did this pose in their professional headshots, I'd have enough money to buy a gun to professionally shoot my head. What's this one? What's this over here? What are you fucking stranger things? You look like a mentally ill virgin. Speaking of, check out the Pig Cake Magic Academy, the home of over 1500 videos. I think 1600 at this point, going over card stuff, coin stuff, everything you need to become the best magician could possibly be. It's a subscription, meaning you pay a monthly fee, which is just, by the way, $5. I grossly undervalue my own academy, but you pay that and you get access to all those videos and I'm always uploading new content. So this is a fun, impromptu, self-working variation of the matching trick. I prefer to do this underneath the table, but if you have somebody that's actually knowledgeable with cards, you could have them do it behind their back. In my experience, every time I've had a participant place anything behind their back, they're stumble fucking. Why? Because they're not professional virgins. They don't know how to handle a deck of playing cards, so it becomes difficult. Whereas if they do it underneath the table, it's a lot easier. So you're gonna take a shuffle deck, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna cut any matching pair that you see to the bottom. What I mean by that, statistically, when you shuffle a deck, odds are that two cards that are gonna match are gonna be together. In this case, I have two tens. So all I'm gonna do is just cut this to the face of the pack. You can do this very easily after the participant shuffles a deck and you go, whoa, whoa, you're really good at mixing the deck. You're really good. I've never seen anybody mix cards like you. And of course you could cut the cards there. You're then gonna have the participant cut off approximately half the deck. At this point, they're gonna take them underneath the table as are you and you're gonna instruct them to mix the cards. Now underneath the table, you could do a number of things. You're gonna have to have control over these two cards. So you could continue shuffling the cards underneath the table as long as you keep these two cards on the bottom of your pile. You could also very sneakily take these two cards and drop them in your lap momentarily. So now what this allows you to do is to exchange piles. So the participant is shuffling your pile, you're shuffling their pile, and of course, everything seems to be fair. The cards that matter are on your lap. So when you bring in this new pile underneath the table, all you're doing is adding these two cards back to the face. You could also do this behind your back. The only thing you gotta do is take these two cards and place them in your waistband right there. So now you could bring out this half, have them shuffle, and those cards are there waiting. Of course, when you exchange piles, all you're doing is adding those two cards back on the face and continuing shuffling while keeping those on the bottom. And now you're gonna tell the participant that they're gonna pick a card for you and you're gonna pick a card for them. This is very easily done on your part because all you're gonna do is just hand them one of those tens. They're gonna hand you any card and this card, of course, is gonna be irrelevant. When you take the cards either behind your back or underneath the table, you're gonna instruct the participant to take the card that was just handed to them turn it the other way around and put it into the middle of their pile. What you're doing with this card is this. You're actually not dropping it on the floor, you're putting it on top of the deck. Then you're taking the card from the bottom, turning it the other way around and putting it into your half. So now think about this. The participant has a card that you picked for them that's turned the other way around, that's inside of their half. You know what that card is, it's the 10. They gave you a card, you discarded it, you put it on top of the deck and you put in your own card and put it in the middle but you're gonna get the credit that the cards match. So now you could bring out both halves and spread them on the table. And of course there's two cards that are face down in each. 
and they're gonna be matching cards. Now, one little twist that you could add with this particular routine is that you could have the remaining cards be blank. This somewhat justifies the necessity for having the cards mixed underneath the table because obviously you don't want the participant to see the cards in advance. So at the end, you bring the cards up face down, you spread them on the table, they match. And of course, behold the twist of all twists when the remaining cards are blank. These cards aren't blank, they're just hiding. It's hiding underneath this blank card. See that? But you get the point. The cards are now blank, everything matches, and you have a wonderful effect. Keep in mind, self-working, easy to do. You get all the credit for having a more complex effect, and all you've done is just hide a couple cards in your lap or in your waistband. This could very well work with two different decks of playing cards. You could also do it that way. And then when you spread the cards, of course, everything matches. They have a deck, you have a deck. No need to complicate things. I've seen magicians do this with subtleties and sticky stuff. You don't need that. I've been kind of obsessed with Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap recently. When I went to California, we we're staying at a place that used this. I'm obsessed with it. It's 18 in one. You could brush your teeth with this, as I have done for the past couple of days. You put in a little spray bottle, add some water, and then you're good to go. You're good to go. This thing smells like um, peppermint. When I used it on my body, I felt like I was levitating. So a little tip there at the end of the video, if you're a magician and you smell like a magician, uh, consider Dr. Bronner's 18 in one peppermint soap and you will now feel very clean. Also, feels great on your nuts. I see you again, when 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 I see you again. Shit, okay. Shit, okay.